Welcome back, everybody. Proto Bro here, infamous brother to make a bro. Uh, about to assault DC here. Um, I've got some artillery chilling. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, but I came a little bit late to the battle, so I'm going to have to wait until this first conflict and then uh, move these guys over after um, I get into position, hopefully. As you can see, he has got a <laughs> ton of power here. Um, this is going to be a challenge for sure. He's got 7,900 power there. I've got 3,000, 3,500. 2500 under uh, um, DH Hill, and then I've got another 15 or 1600 under Lee. Now, I was debating keeping Lee back, and that way I have a full encirclement, but I've got a little bit of a, of a, a buffer here with Wheeler up here. I do have 1100 power force coming down, which uh, you know I'm not going to be able to hold here for too long. Um, but I really want to hit this as uh, hard as possible possible so I'm still debating if I want to move Lee in there we'll see we'll figure it out uh, and then after uh, the battle happens at DC hopefully I'll be uh, in a nice little position there and then I'll be able to move my artillery over and then whatever other reinforcements I can keep funneling in um, and then perhaps I'll move Lee back out uh, or maybe I'll keep Lee here but move DH Hill you know, I'm not sure yet uh, otherwise, torn up the rail lines pretty effectively up here in the north, and then not really anything else going on um, in the south. I uh, just built a bunch of a uh, bunch more militia so I can train them up under um, what call him uh, under Taylor. Got Quantrill now as a new general. Um, as you can see, he's got the basically the deep rating stats. So we're gonna get put him up. Keep just tearing up the rail lines as much as I can, um, and then Grant's up here, uh, which is a little concerning because uh, anywhere Grant's at. You know, there's always a possibility he's going to attack. He's got a 1600 power force up there. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of wait and see what he does. If he does start pushing in, then I'm going to use the rail lines here to uh, counter his movements. But I'm going to wait and see what he does first before I, I start to do that. And um, and beyond that, there's not a whole lot else going on just yet. Although hopefully DC will make things uh, very, very interesting. I do have 131 morale. So if I can take DC, I think I'm going to win the game. Um, that that is why I've kind of held off spending anything on printing money or that stuff because I want to keep my morale up as much as possible. The four percent price inflation is pretty significant since we're at twenty one percent, so I'm having trouble, you know, keeping up with with building things. As you can see here, uh, our re replacements we're, we're decent on replacements for our infantry and uh, some somewhat on our cavalry, and we're going to need it because this next battle we're probably going to take a pretty pretty heavy hit. So. All right, uh, with that, I'm assuming at the turn, we'll go from there. Oh, uh, and by the way, I did get uh, Gordon um, last turn, so I moved him up, put him in with Longstreet. Um, so that's a, he's a, he's actually more than a 3, two, three two, 2 I want to say he's like a 5, no, he's like a 4, 4, 3 or something crazy. Um, so he'll be able to get in the battle now and help with this, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and with that, I am going to simulate the turn. I'm going to simulate it and then um, let you guys watch it too, so. The uh, fortunate thing is Halleck is the one that's in charge here, so. All right, I'm gonna cut through a little bit here in the video and um, get to the point where there's some actions uh, being taken. Good news is, is all of our core commanders made their activation rolls, so that's really good uh, for the circumstances that we're in uh, with this attacking and so forth. So he attacked me up there where Hampton's at. That was my cavalry, which is fine. He was just there as a delay action anyways. Um, he had twice as many troops. So uh, as you can see, he's trying to bring in reinforcements. That's fine. I've got uh, Jackson up there.
So it's obviously a very aggressive move. Oh, here's an attack on Beauregard. Interesting, okay. Um, he had a lot more troops than I do. Whoa, there. Okay, good. So my reinforcements came in. So both both my corps got involved in that battle. Um, big victory. So he's... Wow, he lost 12,300. We only lost 37. So we were very well entrenched, too. Um, I'll go through all the results here uh, on at the end of this battle. But that went really well. Sweet. That'll increase our morale even further. Assuming DC is in a complete debacle, which I'm a little nervous to see how that goes. It's going to start here in a couple days. I say, yeah, here we go. Oh, actually, what that? Oh, interesting. So he tried to cross the river. And, uh, he got he got licked pretty good. He's got Sedwig, who's got a decent. But Sedwig was better than that. He gets slapped at that river crossing penalty too. All right. So Grant's moving on Beauregard, so I may have to find a way to counter over there. I'm definitely having some difficult time holding the uh, front that I established over in the west. Which is fine, the more troops he allocates over to the west, the less troops he's got right here. Alright, so here we go. 110,000 troops is what I got, uh, and he only had 80. Pretty much took everything I had. And just threw it into the army of uh, Western Virginia or whatever it's called now. Interesting. So one of my core fell out of the battle, I guess. Not sure what happened there. Why I dropped thirty thousand troops out of nowhere. Twenty ten. Oh, there we go. Okay, so they're back. It's a freaking massive battle. Wow! Look at that. All right, so it was a victory in the field at least. He lost twenty-two thousand. I lost twenty-four. I obviously had the numerical advantage. Anytime you attack with Lee, you're going to lose a lot of troops. Um, but victory is far more important than the, in my opinion, the, the troops that you lose in a battle. Um, I'll go through all those results as well. Um, so he's probably in the defenses now. I imagine. Um, not sure where this attack's happening at. Who's this guy? Ah, oh, gotcha, okay. That's fine. He can have... I mean, if he wants to take that, whatever. If I get DC, it's all that matters. Okay, so I have the regional territory of DC, and he is... in the defenses. He's besieging Alexandria. I've got DC. I've got the river between me and his entire army now, which is phenomenal. Um, if he tries to attack me from the north, I've got Jackson there as a buffer. So I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. I think what I'll do is I'll move uh, Lee. No, I'm going to move DH Hill north there um, as a way of ensuring my flank is secure and he can't cross. This is good. This is really good. I like the positioning, how that went, and also like how that battle went. I don't know if the South ever had an army with 110,000 troops. I want to say the army that uh, Lee took over for, the army of uh, Northern Virginia, prior to the seven days battle was the largest of the army the Northern Virginia was, I think. It obviously wasn't the most efficient or best equipped, but it was numerically, I think, the largest. But I don't think it was up to, uh, I don't think it numbered 110,000. Maybe like 90, something like that. All right, so he's pushing hard in the West um, on both ends, actually, it looks like. So that makes it even more imperative that we take DC ASAP. 
before the tide starts to get a little too uh, difficult to stem. Okay, so we gain two morale altogether from that. Um, <laughs> you would think like a battle like DC would have uh, generated a far larger disparity in uh, morale, but it did not. Um, he still has some troops in the field. I'm not sure if that's if they're in the field or if they're in the defenses. Um, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take DH Hill and move him here. As a way of, of keeping my, my flank secure. He's, he's besieging that. That's fine. I don't care about that. Let me see if I can do landmines. Just thinking about this right now instead of... Oh, right there. Um, okay. So, the one crappy thing about this was I had all this artillery here and I just lost it. That's bad. It's actually really annoying. Um... I had a siege artillery here, and I had some other stuff. I didn't know they could... I didn't expect them to, to cross over and attack, so that kind of screwed me. So that's that's bad. That's annoying. Um, shoot. Okay. Well, anyways. Unless they crossed over here. Oh, here we go. Beautiful. Oh, well, that works. So I'm going to give those to Longstreet. Longstreet's going to be my homeboy. He's going to besiege him. Um, good. So, okay. So actually, all of my artillery crossed over... And it was not captured, so that, that works out well. Um, and he crossed over too, so we might as well just combine everybody into that. Um, Alright, so I'm going to get the siege artillery put on there and so forth. So forth. Um, I'll do those moves uh, offline so you can see it. Okay, so first was uh, Wade Hampton. We had uh, two hours of battle. I'm not really going to go this in detail. He's just my cavalry. Um, he... he Performed well, but, you know, he was numerically uh, outnumbered pretty significantly. Lost about the same amount of troops. That was uh, right here, up in this area. And he was just hanging out here really just to kind of delay any kind of reinforcements from, from coming down. So, um, as I thought was going to happen, he's moved down to this area here. Uh, this is an important spot for me because it connects the rail line. So, I have to figure out how I'm going to deal with that. I think probably what I'm just going to do, I'm going to use... Um, I'm just going to put DH Hill here, and I think that'll be enough to secure things. I'd like this rail line for supply purposes, but I, I can do without it. I just have to be on top of my game here, making sure he's fully supplied. I do think, though, this place has got it's got a lot of ammo. Um, the supply stock's not that great, so I'm going to have to find a way to get Jackson a uh, wagon train or two, which I think will be fine because I've got, I've got a bunch of wagon trains here. I think I've got your long street here. Uh, yeah, I've got five wagon trains under him, and then DH Hill's got several. So I can just, uh, just it's going to take me a little bit longer to move him back and forth, but I can get Jackson what he needs. Uh, Beauregard, all right, so this is over in the west. Um, this is the battle, uh, can I move this? Yeah, I can't move it, but uh, I'll, sh I'll show you. All right, so he's he's right here, right? This is uh, this is Kentucky right here. Um, this is, I want to say, Illinois. Uh, Indiana, sorry. And uh, he's got two core, and they attacked me here for some reason. Not a smart move, apparently. Uh, it was two, only two hours of battle, and we just absolutely massacred him, largely uh, because of our uh, entrenchment bonus, which was probably seven. Yeah, look at that, 311% entrenchment bonus. Multi-lever trenches. That, wor that worked out really well. And uh, I'm not going to go through the details on that. By the way, you know, if there's a, if you want me to go through the details, just mention in the comments that you want me to do that. But so this is the first attack across into Alexander where we kind of whipped him pretty good, and I don't think it was that long; it's like an hour. Uh, but then the second attack was more effective for some reason. I believe this is the the battle of DC. Yeah, so uh, very long battle, five hours. Uh, we lost twenty four thousand troops and a bunch of cavalry and some artillery. Actually, a fourth of our artillery. It's a lot. Um, but he lost uh, less cavalry, but you know, a little bit less troops, but percentage-wise, a lot more. And then uh, less artillery, a lot of artillery, which is you know not surprising for the Union. So uh, first uh, first hour, we've got um, looks like okay. ah shoot no what is going on? Go back to that. Sorry, it kind of locked up on me there for a moment. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we got no morale for winning this battle in DC. That, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. I don't know if it's because we, we had the numerical advantage and so it was expected or, or what. But that's stupid. Um, Alright, so the uh, first tower. And this is being really laggy. What's going on here? Um, I only had, uh, it looks like, DH Hill's core that, that was involved here. And if it would stop being so laggy, I could show you. Um, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of firing back and forth uh, to start. Round two, um, it looks like we got, got in the fight here. Long Street, yep. Yeah. So now Long Street's in the fight. Those are his division commanders there. I'm trying to figure out how long it took uh, Jackson to get in the fight. Um, but as you can see, he's got some decent commanders here. Actually, let's have them. Friends, crap. That's worth crap. Oh, okay, so he's got, uh, here's Wilson, he's a 4-3-3. Uh, he's got Gibbons, who's phenomenal, 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Um, yeah. So, I, I don't know why this is being so laggy, I apologize, guys. Um, I'm probably not going to go through it too much here, since you got to see it uh, real time. Um, basically, the, the moral of the story for this battle was that there was consistent pain inflicted on both sides each hour but because we had more troops it was felt more on his end really was what it comes down to um, and then finally when they crossed over into Alexandria uh, I took more casualties and um, he ended up making me flee but he had 34,000 troops so that's kind of what forced me over which is fine because now he is here he's got troops here which isn't really all that significant uh, and um, I've still got a buffer up here, so we're gonna pound away. We're gonna try and take DC. I, uh, I I may even reconsider moving DHL out and just keep them all here and just try and take DC right now. Uh, and uh, kind of almost like a go big, go home sort of situation. Especially considering uh, you know I could take Jackson and push him through DC back across the river if necessary, or down through here. I mean I've got different options available to me. I'm not totally cut off. Um, so I'll, I'll think about it, see what I'm gonna do there. Uh, otherwise, there wasn't um, wasn't much else going on that is worth seeing because, as you saw, um, you saw the different battles. Uh, we got 19 money through war supply through the blockade, by the way. And uh, before I simulate the turn, I'll show you what I'm up to and um, kind of go through the rest of things. So. All right, boys and girls, I simulated the turn, and uh, even though Lee missed his activation roll, I guess because we have so many more troops, uh, we end up winning the battle at uh, DC. So um, we have not taken the capital yet, but we're definitely making progress. Uh, as you can see here, um, we lost 13,000. He lost 18. It was a pretty quick battle, I think. Oh, four hours. All right, so actually pretty long. Um, I decided not to move DH Hill uh, out of the region. I figure this is a go big or go home moment. Um, we're going all in. Um, uh, Hood did get injured in the battle, so he's now out, um, which is a bit of a blow for me. Got to figure out what I'm going to do about that. Um, but uh, we did kill off 18,000 of his troops, which basically was almost half his army in the DC area. Um, and then he's still got a fairly sizable stack down here, but the thing is it's across the river. And um, if he wants to push into Virginia, fine. As you can see, I don't really have anything down here. I'm not going to be able to do much, but... I'm going to start beefing up uh, Richmond, um, but by the time he makes it his way down to Richmond, uh, DC should be ours if he decides not to try and counter it, so um, we're doing good. This is good, good, good. I don't... I don't know what happened to Hood's... I wonder if, like, Hood's entire division just got destroyed. <laughs> that is perfectly possible. Uh, not only am I red-red, which I've been doing, I've been doing red-red, um in the hopes of, of taking DC, but he's also my most aggressive general, so I may have lost that entire division. Which is, you know, I'm not, say it's, I'm not gonna say it's fine, but uh, as long as we're making progress towards a goal of taking DC, I'll take it. Uh, we did gain one morale from the turn. As you can see here, he is besieging Alexander, but he's not taking it. All of his troops are across the river here. Um, he can come across here and then uh, attack me, which is um, fine. But, um, 
again, I feel like it's going to be more advantageous for me to have all my, my core right here instead of having one up here and having to move to the center of the guns. Now, granted, um, the advantage to having a core up here is that, uh, one, it'll contest his ability to cross the river, but then two, um, it'll connect Smith, who's kind of up here hanging out by himself right now. Uh... No, I just I go back and forth. I feel like, so Lee does not have uh, a big enough stack for me to just kind of have him hang out up here, in my opinion, just based on the, the force that he has here. I don't know how many troops he has, but um, he's a sizable power uh, force. He's got two core hanging down here with good power, and then another core that's kind of half strength. So, you know what? Uh, I feel like... The thing, the thing that I'm, I'm concerned about is if he moves up here, it's going to isolate my, my armies here. Which I think, I think he can handle it. You know what? DC is our goal. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to deviate now. Things are working out, so let's just stick with it. Um, I can see why having a core here would be advantageous, honestly. But um, again, they got to move to the sound of guns, and it just seems to me. Although I think Jackson got involved last one too. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do I do? What do I do? The soil, fighting for a liberty with treasure, blood, and toil. And when if I moved well, a core up there, it would be DHL. Who, honestly, he's pretty beat up. Yeah, let's just keep them all here. He's, he's pretty beat up, so. What's happening out there? Got Jackson right here. He's doing pretty well. Um, the reason I'm keeping him here is he's got a nice little river defense here. Um, so if he decides to move down with the stack here, I've got nice defense. Um, Butler can attack me if he's a crappy general anyways, so. And then uh, I'm beefing him up with what little force I have. I'm moving these guys over, trying to beef him up a little bit further. Um, I do have a good defensive general, though, under uh, McClaws. He's got a four defense, so I, th I should be okay at least as long as Butler stays um, that strength. As you can see up here, tearing up the rail lines. Uh, I continue to do it. I've got partisans up behind those lines, these guys, and I just... Just try to tear up the rail lines as much as I can to uh, inhibit his ability to get reinforcements in. I don't know how many supply wagons he's got here. He's got one. Um, I think I might destroy this depot. Just do that. Alright, um, so that's uh, Virginia area. Uh, again, moving troops over and so forth. Um, and it's, it's getting close. Uh, I, can, I can taste victory. Also put another landmine down in DC to try and breach those walls. Um, he does have a sizable force up here under uh, Logan. As you can see, lots of divisions. Not sure what he's going to do with it. Um, I, I feel pretty comfortable with what I got here though. So I, I think if he tried to cross, we could probably contest it pretty effectively. Uh, I also have them on blue-red to make sure that they don't, they don't flee. Because this is a very important bottleneck for me. Um, he did not attack Beauregard again, uh, like he did last turn. He's hanging out up here. I'm not sure what he's doing. I'm just going to watch that pretty closely. And then finally, my, my Far West uh, Army. Um, he did move a 1200 stack here, so I actually relocated uh, Holmes from this little um, railroad junction area down here so I could combine him and uh, Johnson. And then I'm bringing uh, another general up so I can start building up another division there because I really don't like having a uh, core or army stack with just one division. It's not good. But I'm a little stretched thin at the moment, so I'm just kind of doing what I can. Um, I just got this guy tearing up the rail lines because why not? Okay. Uh, and then I'm um, training up conscripts here, which actually these guys are perfect to move to St. Louis right now. And okay. Um, let's move four for now. There. Uh, I want to keep the rest over here just in case uh, Grant makes a move, then I can reinforce um, some of my, my divisions here with a little bit more troops. He is putting pressure though over here. I may have to at some point kind of backtrack a little bit and fuse these two armies into one, maybe back down here. Which, which again, that's, that's I'm fine with that. Like, I mean, I really took this uh, all up here just as a delay action, uh, so to speak, and holding on to it as long as I can. And uh, if I have to eventually pull back, uh, that, that's fine. Um, I've got nice little defensive areas down here that I can uh, pull back to, so. Nothing going on in Texas still. Sherman's just hanging out. As long as he wants to keep Sherman down there, I am all a fan of that. 
Um, I do have this guy here where I've kind of been debating pushing forward. Um, but, but I guess really like, do I need to? Not really, you know? It's like, I don't really care about any of this stuff. And there's a, there's a depot up here, but it probably doesn't have much. And then, um, you know, he's got a little militia there, so it's like, whatever. Uh, if, I, if I pushed, I get attack here and then push north, but then that'll leave my, my, my flank open. Um, and then he did attack me here, but didn't really do much. It's, this is kind of like trivial stuff over here, so. Uh, and he's pushing with the force this way, which I'm not too worried about, because if necessary, I can always detach troops from, from Springfield and, and move them down. So I'm feeling good about that, and uh, overall, um, things are going well, knock on wood. Things could always change pretty pretty drastically, so. Uh, as far as builds, uh, I'm building a few infantry, but really I just took what money, what little money I had, and put it into um, trying to replace my replacement chits, which are um, suffering badly right now. I thought I had beefed this up fairly well, but as you can see, I burned through it real quick. Um, out of cavalry chits, uh, militia chits, um, infantry... So, uh, what I did do, as much as I really didn't want to, is I'm going to print money, 600,000 bucks. It's a 4% four, four inflation, though, and I'm already at 20%, so now it's going to go to 24, 24%. So, it is what it is. Uh, I need the money, though. I need the cash. I need to keep the pressure up, and uh, I need to be able to sustain my losses. Um, really quick here, before I conclude this video, here is the overall score and objectives. Uh, if we take DC, it is 50. Huge. Uh, and his morale is down to 77, so I think that'll end the game, potentially. We'll see. Um, I've taken 90,400 prisoners, and um, I've lost 148,900, so basically 149,000, but he has lost 232,000 troops. So, so far, casualty-wise, we're looking at about 370,000 Americans that have died in this war so far along with, you know, 90,000 prisoners with who knows how many of them have died of uh, disease and malnourishment and so forth. All right, so uh, I need 175 morale to win is what I need. So if I take DC, I think I'm going to get it. The uh, foreign entry level is really high as well. It's 23. Not sure what I need to get them to join in. I'm wondering if there's a... Let's see if there's some way for me to activate the foreign intervention that will hire. Um, I know there's some things. I, I rarely do it, so I don't even know where to find it. Um, here we go. Yeah, it's going to cost me morale, though. So I need the morale. All right, so if I don't beat it with the morale taking DC, maybe we'll consider getting that, getting that rolling. All right. Uh, with that, I'm going to conclude the video. On the flip side, you will see what happens on DC. Hopefully, it's uh, good news for us. Um, we're close, but... Again, it's not going to take much for them to kind of put pressure on me and kick me back across the river, so we'll see. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you find it entertaining and gets you inspired to play the game. Uh, comment if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to see, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.